The mountainous region of Nagorno-Karabakh has long been at the heart of tensions between Armenia and Azerbaijan. Internationally recognized as part of Azerbaijan, but with a majority ethnic Armenian population, it declared independence in the late Soviet period. Although the primary fighting between Azerbaijan and Armenia has shifted geographically, it remains fundamentally linked to a decades-old conflict over Nagorno-Karabakh. To many this will come as a surprise, Azerbaijan is majority Muslim, and Armenia is majority Christian, and some elements on both sides seek to cast the conflict in religious terms, though analysts say this angle is exaggerated. A years-long war between Armenia and Azerbaijan followed, killing tens of thousands of people and leaving hundreds of thousands displaced. It ended in a 1994 ceasefire that left Armenia in control of Nagorno-Karabakh and seven surrounding districts that were legally part of Azerbaijan. During the war in 2020, Azerbaijan, with powerful Turkish backing including attack drones, recaptured much of Nagorno-Karabakh and the surrounding districts. The death toll was in the thousands, and tens of thousands of people were forced to flee. A ceasefire brokered by Russia left Azerbaijan holding most of the territory, with Armenian forces pulling back and heavily armed Russian peacekeepers moving in. Now, analysts say, Azerbaijan is pushing to have Armenia recognize Azerbaijani sovereignty over Nagorno-Karabakh, and to make other concessions. One problem is that peace talks after the 2020 war have not yet yielded a resolution. Armenia's Prime Minister, Nikol Pashinyan, has said he intends to come to terms, but his domestic opponents have denounced the sort of deal that would be on the table as treasonous. He already faced angry protests after the 2020 ceasefire. Analysts said that Azerbaijan's government had three demands, renunciation by Armenia of its claims in Nagorno-Karabakh, the demarcation of the international border on its terms and security control of a yet-to-be-built road and rail corridor to Nakhchivan, an island of Azerbaijani territory inside Armenia. That would also connect Azerbaijan with Turkey. Azerbaijan's military action amounted to probing that aimed to alter the facts on the ground where possible and to press Armenia to negotiate a treaty on its terms. Russia has laid claim to two roles in this dispute, brokering ceasefire deals while also guaranteeing Armenia's security. The first role has so far helped it avoid the full potential costs of the second. The Prime Minister of Armenia spoke by phone with President Vladimir Putin just recently, and the Kremlin brokered a rapid ceasefire, calling on the two sides to respect the 2020 agreement. But that initial ceasefire did not hold, leading the United States to use its influence with both sides to halt fighting and Putin did not offer military aid. Moscow's ability to project strength in the South Caucasus, for example by supplying arms or providing other military support to Armenia, is constrained by its war in Ukraine. But Moscow may also find its double role in the South Caucasus, harder to maintain if the situation grows more dangerous. In 2020, the line between the two forces was in territory occupied by Armenia inside Azerbaijan. Now, the Armenian and Azerbaijani militaries are pretty much facing each other on the still undemarcated state border between the two countries. NATO member state Turkey was the first nation to recognize Azerbaijan's independence in 1991. Former Azeri President Haydar Aliyev once described the two as, one nation with two states. Both share a Turkic culture and populations. Moreover, Turkey has no official relations with Armenia. In 1993, Turkey shut its border with Armenia in support of Azerbaijan during the war over Nagorno-Karabakh. Turkey says it will stand by its ally Azerbaijan, and Azerbaijan's gains in 2020 reflected more extensive Turkish backing than in previous confrontations, part of a turn to a more assertive foreign policy by President Recep Tayyip Erdogan. At the same time, Turkey's economy is in crisis, and it has made overtures to Russia in the past over security, including the purchase of a missile system. The USA want the two sides to return to negotiations and prevent further hostilities. This is in line with the stance of the Minsk group of states, the United States, Russia and France, which have been cautious in assigning blame. More broadly, Washington has long sought influence in the South Caucasus and other states in the former Soviet Empire. 
The wider South Caucasus is a crucial artery for gas and oil from Azerbaijan into Turkey and on to Europe and other world markets. The European Union, meanwhile, has redoubled efforts for a peace deal since the 2020 war, the leaders of Armenia and Azerbaijan held peace talks in Brussels in late August this year. But Europe's position is now complicated by its search for additional natural gas supplies to make up for the loss of Russian imports given the war in Ukraine. In mid-July, the European Commission President, Ursula von der Leyen, visited Azerbaijan to sign an agreement with Azerbaijan's President, Ilham Aliyev. During the visit, she said Azerbaijan was a reliable, trustworthy partner. A full-fledged conflict between Armenia and Azerbaijan risks dragging in the big regional powers, Russia and Turkey, and destabilizing the South Caucasus, an important corridor for pipelines carrying oil and gas, at a time when the Ukraine war is already disrupting energy supplies. Moscow has a defense alliance with Armenia and operates a military base there, while Ankara backs its ethnic Turkic kin in Azerbaijan both politically and militarily. A war between Armenia and Azerbaijan could create a need for more peacekeepers, at a time when Moscow could ill afford to provide them. The risk is of the establishment of sort of new buffer zones, security zones, a kind of a fragmentation of at least the southern part of Armenia and a powerlessness amongst outside actors to stop that from happening. Other than the humanitarian issue, with civilians on both sides being killed, the conflict sparks international concern for a few reasons. Turkey has already declared its staunch support for Turkic-speaking Azerbaijan, while Russia has a security alliance with Armenia, though it sells weapons to both countries. Moscow and Ankara have been jostling for influence in different theaters around the world including in Syria and Libya. Furthermore, Moscow's stake in the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, while also fighting in Ukraine, adds a fresh element of uncertainty to the crisis. Russia does not want any escalation that would require its response, the West does not want an escalation that would lead Russia to beef up its military presence in the region, which has already grown since 2020. As for what the mediators tell Baku and Yerevan, the core message has not changed, efforts to resolve the party's long-running dispute militarily are likely to produce nothing better than a brittle, unsustainable peace. Instead, they say, the parties should return to the negotiation table, where they can best achieve their objectives. Important as this message is, however, it will also be vital to convey a sense of urgency. The frequency of fighting over the course of 2022 is cause for alarm. Absent significant outside pressure, the 30-year conflict could too easily flare up anew, especially as September's fighting stokes fresh anger in a region still raw from the 2020 war.